Hi everybody, thank you for coming to my channel. Let us listen together. Introduction, I'm Ronnie. I'd like to share with you something. You know, I told you that before, I'm associated with different organizations. This is from the Berean. And I think the one, his name actually is uh, T.A. Mech Mehen. Okay, or Mehen is his name, okay? So, it's a question they ask him. And I was planning to write my sister a letter because my half sister passed away uh, you know last week so uh let me go over here and i will explain more at the end what i'm talking about okay here was a question from a man over here okay uh he says to to, to mohan okay uh, in one of you talk you quote the soul that sinneth itself die and you can read it in ezekiel uh, 18 verse 4 and the wages of sin is death you then said that this means separation from God forever on what ground do you define death as an immortal existence rhetorical annihilation versus ever burning hell we do not believe that the natural man has innate immortality because the scripture like the first one above and rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell in Matthew 10 28 and he that con uh, conf uh, converts the sinner from error shall save his soul from death and that you can read in James 5.20. Please give scripture proving that mortal man is really of and by himself immortal. Very good question. And a lot of people don't understand this. I got the same problem with when talking to people. They think death is death, you know. But it's not true. Okay. Now, look what his response over here. Unfortunately, your division of death and immortality, did I write down immortality? But, uh, I had two L's, okay? I'm sorry. It's only one L. Immortality, okay? Does not agree with the Bible. In the very day that Adam and Eve uh, ate of the forbidden fruit, they died. But they were not anni uh, annihilated as you define death in your attempt to escape the biblical statesman about uh, eternity in the lake of fire. What does it mean that Adam and Eve were dead yet still living? Spiritual death brought instant separation from God the moment Adam and Eve rebelled against him by eating of the forbidden fruit. In this uh, early, uh, yeah, in this er earthly life, however, there is hope of that spiritual separation being ended by a recon so reconciliation with God through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, who paid the penalty for sin and tasted death for every man. You can you read it in Hebrews 2:9? Did I write down Hebrews? Yeah, Hebrews 2. Everything's on the board. Okay, Hebrews 2 9. Those who reject Christ will experience the second death. Revelation, and you wrote down over there 2 11, 2 6, uh, and 14, and 21 8. I, I like 21 8 very much. Okay, which is eternal separation from God in the lake of fire. You can read it also in Revelation 9 20, 20 10, and 14 15. Your idea of immortality assume that the lost must be immortal in order to exist eternally in hell. Not so. The word immortal occurs only once in the entire Bible. And you can read it in 1 Timothy 1.17. And, it, and it's a description of God who alone is eternal, having neither beginning nor end. Who alone has immortality in 1 Timothy 6.16. 6, 
The immortality that God gives to man refers to the new body that can never uh, die in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verses 53 and 54. Received by the redeemed angels, demons, Satan, and mankind were created and therefore have a beginning. That's what we call everlasting life. A lot of people don't understand that, okay, but it's true. There is a beginning, but no ending. That means everlasting life. Eternal life means no beginning and no ending. Alpha Omega, God called it also in, in, uh, in Revelation. Uh, I could add sometimes certain things because as I'm reading, I, certain scriptures popped up, okay, so I'll just share with you. Uh, there is one verse in the Bible, however, to indicate that their existence F ever ends. There is no one, there is not one verse in the Bible, however, indicate that existence ever ends, but endless existence is never referred to as immortality. Jesus says, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of God, and they that hear shall live. In John 5:25, he was of course referring to the spiritual death, hearing the gospel, and receiving eternal life. That's true. When you're born again, okay, is what they call it. Those who reject the gospel remain in spiritual death. Of them, Jesus says, the hour is coming, clearly a future hour, because he leaves out the phrase, and now is in which all that are in the grave shall come forth in John 5, 28 and 29. This is the yet future resurrection of the save of the rapture to eternal life in heaven and later after the last rebellion at the end of the millennial reign of Christ of the damned to eternal death in the lake of fire. So that's different dispensation. John clearly stated, I saw the dead, those who remain in spiritual death by rejecting the gospel. Small and great stand before God, Revelation 20 verse 12. This is at the end of the world in final judgment. These people are both spiritual death, uh, spiritually and physical death, but they are not annihilated. Annihilated, okay? Instead, they are standing before God and being judged according to their works to determine the level of punishment each will eternally endure. Those standing in that judgment has been taken from hell itself. Actually, the, the word hell in that aspect actually means Sheol or Hades the underground, and death and hell deliver up the dead which were in them, Revelation uh, 20, 13. The lost are dead, and in, so again, the word hell is in Osiris, but they are still conscious. And this is where a lot of people don't understand. At the final judgment, they are brought forth to stand before God then cast into the lake of fire. That's the white throne judgment. And there is never a hint that their consciousness will ever end. Christ tells, uh, Christ tells us of these poor souls through the story of the rich man and Lazarus. You can read it in Luke uh, 16, starting with 14, 19, but, and I shared that before, about the rich man and the poor man. This is not a parable, because he never used names in a parable, okay? But it's about real people who have lived on this earth and died. Even if you were to turn in it into a parable, what would it illustrate? The very thing you don't want to believe, that the punishment of the lost is eternal. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, 
This is the second death, and you can read it in Revelation 20, verse 14. When death and hell are cast in the lake of fire, the rich man to whom Christ referred will be among those doomed because he went to hell when he died. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell, in Hades more or less, okay, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. You can read it in Luke 16, 22 and 23. In warning about hell, Christ referred to the fire that never shall be quenched. Matthew 18, 8, 9, Mark 9, 43 and 48, 248. We are told that in the lake of fire, the beast and the false prophet shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Revelation 20, verse 10. We have every reason to believe that the lost who are taken from death and hell to the final judgment and then cast into the lake of fire will also be tormented in the flame forever. This can only be uh, the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels in Matthew 25:41, which Christ warns men to avoid at all costs. Now I'm sharing this scripture real quick. There's more to it to say, but I was I told you I was planning to write my sister in law because when I called her about my sister or actually it's a half sister of me, you know, in Holland, she passed away. I witnessed to her and um, was a pro uh, then I found out she told a friend of ours because I sent people to go to her to witness about the gospel to her. And she, don't, she didn't like it. Uh, even uh, later, even a, pet, a Baptist pet went over there, and some of their uh, people of the organization, uh, or you know, from the church, stopped by. She doesn't want to change. She doesn't like it. So, after I talked to her before that and about the gospel too, and I shared with her, she let my friend know. Was all about, of course, in Holland, that she didn't like me talking about God and eternity. So what I did, the last time I talked to her was probably in December, so since then I, I talked to her I think once or twice uh, until she passed away. She passed away, she had, uh, she needed oxygen, and I think because she was smoking, and so it was short of uh, oxygen. And so I don't talk to her anymore after that. The, the sad part is this, when I told her you know, the last time I talked to her about God was in December. I told her the end of December. And I told her that God uh, prompted me to call her and really emphasize life after death. And I told her how God spoke to me through the Holy Spirit in his, through His Word. And she was laughing at me. So I was stupid in a nice way. She doesn't believe that. So here, after that uh, remark, I, don't, I didn't talk anymore about spiritual things. When I call, I just say, hi, how are you? And, you know, hope that you're feeling better. That's all I could say, you know, because she blocked it. She refused to hear anything about that. Now, <clears throat> she passed away. According to the scripture, you know what it says, she's lost. Lost means eternal separation from God. My own half-sister. Now, this also happened to my older brother. Okay, by, by the way, my half, my half sister her name is Siska, and my brother, you know, we call him, his little name is Peter, but uh, we call him Boy because my parents called him Boy because he was thinking, they were thinking about the, a Tarzan, you know, and, and Boy, so they just use, use a nickname. And my younger brother Richard, okay, I witnessed to them, they refused. And, uh, and you know, my older brother especially said, told me that. Well, I'll find out when I die. And I told her, Hebrews, I uh, think, 9 or 10 over there, tells you that I dare appoint unto men once to die and after that the judgment. In 9.28, I'm pretty sure. So here, he refused. So in that aspect, he's lost too. Okay? Now, when I talked to my sister over here in Las Vegas, I shared with her about, of course, uh, about my half our, our half-sister who passed away. And she knows, you know, that uh, 
My sister, my half sister, this guy was uh, having problems breathing because of smoking. All she said, so she's much better off because she's not suffering anymore. I'm trying to tell even my sister, and I, you know, of course, I gave her tracts in the Bible that it's not true. So I will this particular um, uh, newsletter, so to speak, I will send it to her because sometimes I've learned that sometimes. Uh, family will not listen to another family, uh, you know. So, uh, I'm a member of the family, of course, so they won't listen. So, I hope by sending this particular letter that she understands what it says, that there is life after death for, it, forever. So, in, real, in reality, I will tell her, our old brother, Pete, Richard, our sister-in-law, Dini. She was, she's also a Dutch, uh, you know, a Dutch woman from Holland, who married my one of my other brother Eddie. Uh, they are lost. I had the privilege to share the gospel with my parents, and they responded properly. So I rejoice in that, because according to the scripture, I will see him again. And my other brother Eddie did the same thing. I saw the change, the way they talk and going to church and reading the Bible. And when I talk to them, I can see the difference, because especially my brother Eddie, he doesn't want to hear nothing about gospel. Don't even talk to him. And when I, last time I talked to him, because he was sick and things like it, he was excited to see me. When I asked him, can I pray with you? He was excited to hear and want me to pray. His attitude completely changed. After, uh, you know, he read the, the tracks and, and repeated hard over there of what to do, how to accept Christ, he did it, and his face changed, his attitude changed, his language changed, his, you know, everything changed. And I'm so excited in that aspect that I uh, witnessed, okay, God's power. Because remember, folks, the Bible says, what does a prophet a man when he conquered the whole world but loses his soul? A big zero. When I talk to other people who don't even believe in hell, may I repeat the scripture over here uh, in uh, Matthew 24, 41. It says over there that hell is prepared for the devil and his followers, or his angels. Okay? Now, that in the Greek has a special meaning to it. In the Greek, they call this, it's written in the perfect tense. Now, you have to understand what it means. And it's the same thing with, I wrote it down, Matthew 4.4. 4. Christ says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded of the mouth of God. That is also being said in the perfect tense. Now to come to the question, what is the perfect tense, okay? It says over here in the Greek, and I will make it a little shorter, I speak of an action that took place in the past, which was completed in past time, and the existence of it finished results. With other words, we're saying is, something happened in the past, he, you know, it's already uh, it's confirmed, but it's still working in the present time, is what it says. With other words, that's what God is trying to tell us, okay? Same thing I shared with you before the word revelation. If you look at it, it's what? History already foretold, you know, past history, okay? In the, for the past. So here, again, God is trying to tell us, I have given you the story and my will but also my commandment and what, what will happen if you don't respond to it. There's a coming of time and a coming of going. But that is a limited time, okay? That's why every individual uh, who's, who are alive on this earth has a chance, okay, when that person comes to the uh, age of account accountability to make that choice. And after that, it's over. As an unbeliever, God says what? 
upon unto men once, once to die, and after that the judgment. For the Christian, Christ, what does the Bible say? Absent from the body and present with the Lord. I know that some people believe, and they teach also, you know, that the people were, you know, who, who died, you can pray for the dead. And I think Sarah better than before. That is impossible. Read the story in Luke uh, 16, verse 19, you know, till, till the end. That's why the rich man has a conscience. I said it before, there is some kind of a gulf over there they cannot cross. So they are waiting for the judgment day, the final judgment day. But in the meantime, they are suffering. And I believe in Sheol, is, you know, and I, excuse me, let me look at it real quick. I'll show with you, i show that before with you, there are different places, right, under the earth. And I don't believe there's any light over there. It's dark. So be aware of it. I told you about Tarakus, where the, uh, in Jude uh, 1 6 tells you over there about the falling angels. Okay? They are in confinement. Then you have the place, remember? Sheol or Hades, they call it in hell, but in hell, Sheol or Hades. And the other side was the paradise with the bosom of Abraham. That one is gone and it's going went to heaven. Then you have another place, the other world, the abyss. And at the end, after the, all has happened to the white throne judgment, okay, people will go where? To the lake of fire, Gehenna. And the first two people will be over there is what? The, the Antichrist and the false prophet. So should I there in uh, Revelation 19, right? Uh, 20, so 20 over there? Which says, yeah. They are the first one who will be thrown, and later after a thousand year reign of Christ, in the meantime, Satan will be locked up, so to speak, even with the perfect society. Think about it. Okay? People will rebel against Christ's reign. And they will die when they speak. As long as they don't say anything, they will still be alive. But at the end of the thousand year reign of Christ, Satan will be loosened. And many, many will follow. And God and Christ is going to stop right there. Okay? What I'm saying is this. Sin is that bad. Even living in a perfect, may I use the word perfect, because the lion and the lamb are laying together. There's no more murder or killing in that aspect. Everything is growing. They have plenty of food, everything, water. But we cannot comprehend how bad sin is. So that's one of the reasons so important. That's why the scripture says, what does the prophet a man remember? This picture for one person, all the wealth of the world cannot save one person. Now can you imagine how rich we are as a believer? Spiritually speaking, of course. We will spend eternity. Eternity there is no ending with God in peace and all the others are suffering forever that's why God has to make what a new earth a new heaven so all my heart is going to, to share with you there is a time from going not up to you to find out where you're going to spend your eternity. You will live forever with a consciousness. You are conscious. So, that's all I can share you folks when it comes to the, you know, eternal life. And I told you the difference. We all, and the angels, we have eternal, uh, everlasting life. But when you become a Christian, God says, I'll give you my life, eternal life. That doesn't mean we are being God. Don't get me wrong. It's impossible. Infinite and finite. It's two different words, okay? So, please, think about it. My heart goes to people who are lost. That's why I said, I do rejoice. My parents, 
as far as I know, and my other brother, they give the heart to Christ. My children did the same thing, so I will, you know, live with, they will live, we will live together, so to speak, forever. But many of my brothers and sisters, and some of my grandchildren, so far, no. They don't want it. And life is so short. Look over here to tell you, don't look at me, in a way. I look back. This year, I'll be 80. And then, it's like that. Like the Bible says, our life is like a vapor. So please, be serious about it, okay? I'm serious about it. I'm trying just to stir you up me, I use a word, to, to think. Now I will tell my sister that there is life after death. If I give her the material, she will not listen. So I hope this newsletter will open her eyes just on brain for that. And she will respond to it, positive, you know, being positive and give the life to Christ. Not only her, but you can do the same thing. Well, I got to stop right now. I would say then, you know, if you got anything out of my video, give my thumb up. If you like to uh, subscribe, ring the notification bell. I will say then, till next time, God bless you. Bye-bye now.